to YouTube videos. So we're trying to do this, trying to do this simultaneously. Um, so we have that recording as well. We will be posting uh, this YouTube message uh, this afternoon. And Pastor Randy is here. He's on the side. We were up early this morning with our baby that we have. Uh, so keep us in prayer for strength as well. But if I was to title this message uh, this morning, it would be check does not apply. Again, check does not apply. Um, many of us have received a census, uh, whether in the mail or an invitation to complete the census online. And if we were to uh, understand the purpose of the census, the reason why they do a census, and I believe, Pastor, it's uh, every 10 years uh, or every so many years, the, the reason for the census is to get an account or to, uh, it's an accountability system in which it's uh, the reason that they use the census is to get an account uh, or, or categorize, whether we like that or not, to categorize uh, those who live within the United States. Uh, it's a required, uh, it is a, a, a law to fill out the census. And so if they don't send it to you in the mail or if you don't receive it in the mail and you don't respond, what happens is they will have somebody come to your house to give for you to give out an account or to take an account of who's in your household and what um, sections are applicable to you and what uh, you uh, what what applies to you. And in these census, there are category there are categories that are necessary that you fill out. Um, one is race, ethnicity, your location, your economic status. You have those categories within the census that will kind of label you or put you into a category in order for uh, the government to provide funding, uh, provide education, uh, uh, correctional reform. There's, there's, a re there's a variety of reasons why the census is done in order for um, there be a distribution of funds to, to be applied to the nation. So there's a, a variety of reasons and it's a tedious process, but we know that we have to do it. Um, in the spiritual aspect of that, many times in our lives and as believers and non-believers, just people in general, life has a tendency to categorize us. There are things in our lives that we've had to apply. There are boxes, if we would, we would uh, put the aspect of life, if we were to pl place life in a survey or an application, there are things in lives that we have to check the box off of. Um, when we, we check, uh, you know, our past experiences, we, you know, are, are we single? Are we divorced? Are, do we have feelings of depression? Do we have feelings of joy? Uh, throughout the season of life and throughout your life, you, you will have moments where there are boxes that you definitely are confident in applying. And then there are boxes that you are forced to apply. Amen. And I want to take you guys to first Samuel chapter one. And I want to share the story with you about a woman that refused. And I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. I, there was a woman in the Bible that refused to check the box. Okay. So first Samuel, and you know, for the sake of time, I won't read it in its entirety, but I want to share with you first Samuel chapter one, and just kind of give you a foundation uh, about that story. So here we have a woman, or let me go back. There was a man named Elkanah and Elkanah had two wives. Now Elkanah, if we, if we kind of jump a little, a, a little bit ahead, Elkanah was the father of the first prophet in Israel. Elkanah was the father of Samuel. And we are very familiar with who Samuel was, right? But Elkanah had two wives. Elkanah's first wife was Penaniah and his second wife was Hannah, okay? If you look at the definition of Elkanah, Elkanah's name means the zeal of God, the exuberance of God, the joy of God, the, the, the vibration, the vibrancy of God. So Elkanah, the zeal of God, had two wives, Penaniah and Hannah. And during the yearly sacrifice, it was customary for uh, uh, families to go and present sacrifice to the priest. And during this time, Elkanah went and gave uh, sacrifice unto the Lord. And 
when the priest would bless the sacrifice, the portions or a part of the sacrifice would be distributed to his family. Now, the Bible says in 1 Samuel, if you go to 1 Samuel, it says that he gave a portion to Penaniah and her children. So Penaniah had the ability to give a lineage or a legacy to Elkanah. And the Bible says that he gave a portion to Penaniah. But it also said that he also gave a double portion to Hannah. And in other translations, if you look in the King James Version, Pastor Randy and Pastor Danny, it says that he gave her a worthy mm -hmm. portion. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because what? He loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Verse 6 says, because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. So Elkanah loved her so much and he knew that there was a void. That he knew that there was something missing in that season that Hannah was experiencing. So what he did was he gave Hannah a double portion. Mm -hmm. In other words, God is going to give you double for your trouble. You might have had to check boxes in your life that you did not really want to check. But can I tell you that there is going to be a season in your life that God is going to vindicate you and God is going to give you a double portion for the process and the struggle that you Amen. have gone through. Amen? Amen. So it says here that the zeal of God, Elkanah, gave a, du a double portion to Hannah. But in the same time, even when you are blessed, can I tell you that the enemy will, will always try to ruin it? There will be seasons in your life that you are happy, you're going, you're, everything's going good, and a monkey wrench will be, will, will be thrown in. You'll be going through something, then your car breaks down. You'll have peace in your home, then something at your work will jump off. It seems like the enemy will always try to ruin the blessing or try to destroy what God has purposed the double portion for you in your life. And it says in verse six that Danny, Danny, it says verse six says that, that even though God had closed her womb, and this was interesting because there were translations that I was going over. And it says that, that Hannah was without child. There's a difference brothers and sisters in Christ between being barren and not having the ability to conceive and then being childless. In other words, that means that what, is on the inside has not been manifested mm -hmm. outwardly yet. See, Hannah was not barren. Hannah, the Bible says that Hannah's womb was closed. There's a difference not having the inf not having the ability to conceive and not having a child at the moment. See, he closed her womb, but it never said that she could not have children. Come on now. See, even though there are boxes in your life that you have been forced to check off does not mean that you are exempt from the blessing of God. Come that on. does not mean that you are exempt from being fulfilled and receiving what God has for you. Listen, it does not matter what you have gone through in your past. It does not matter the mistakes that you have committed, the sins you have committed. I'm telling you, if you refuse to check that box in life, the enemy cannot put you in that category. The Bible says that he loved Hannah. God loves you. Those who are hearing me on YouTube and those who are hearing me on this stream. God loves you and he desires to fill the void on your, in your life. There are some things that this world has caused you to check off in the application of life, in the senses of life, and has put you in a box. But I am telling you this morning that you are not confined by what you've had to check off. Verse six, and we said that, that there was a rival. It seems like you are, you. some of us are in this process. We're believing God, we're praying, we're serving God, we're tithing, we're offering. Listen, we're going to church, we're being faithful and committed and nothing has occurred yet. Year after year, Hannah was going with the family to, to present a sacrifice. And the Bible says that she refused to eat and she refused, and she was crying. The, the, the scriptures, if you look at the scriptures, it says that her, her heart was heavy. Her soul was bitter. In other words, her mind, her will, and her emotions were distressed. When you are going through something in your life and your soul is distressed, that means your, your mind is not functioning correct, your emotions are out of whack, your spirit, everything is just in, in, in a distress. And she could not fake the funk anymore. Hannah could not continue to go and offer a sacrifice to a God that was not providing for her in that season. 
There are moments that we are believing God and we are trusting God, but we don't see the evidence. Pastor Danny, there are moments in our, in our humanity that we are upset. We are questioning God. We are saying, God, I've done everything that I can do. I've served you. I worship you. And yet I do not see see the evidence occurring. I did not see my faith being manifested, but can I tell you, you might be childless right now, but you are not barren. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not barren just because you don't see it right now. Just because you don't feel it right now does not mean that God is not working on your behalf. Hallelujah. Life has a way of pointing out the obvious. Hannah knew that she was not, uh, a, a, did not have a child at that moment. Penaniah made sure that she knew it. Everybody around her mocked her. Her husband even said, see, see, you know, he, if you look at it, to be honest, even her husband was frustrated with her season. Her husband was frustrated because he said, Hannah, aren't I enough for you? Aren't, isn't my love for you? Isn't my love for you enough more than 10 sons? In other words, her Elkanah, the zeal of God, you know, you, you're going, it's, it's kind of funny, Pastor Randy and Pastor Danny, because sometimes you go to church and you see everybody, do you know that there is jealousy in the body of Christ? Because there are people that are believing for the same things that you have been receiving and they cannot understand why God has given it to you and not have given it to them because it's not their season. Because they're not in that moment where God, or they're not in that position, or it's not their time for them to receive it. It does not mean that that, that they are God's favor. It does not mean that, that God doesn't love them. It's just not your moment. So we find ourselves being provoked. We find ourselves being questioning or having to continue to check that box, you know. And it seems in some areas you are complete. Listen, there are some areas in our life that are refined. There are some areas in the life they were like, man, the devil can't get me there. there. There's nothing going on in that situation. You know, I'm doing good. But then there's areas of insufficiency. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you today? Can I, can, I, uh, can I defunct the misconception in Christianity that everything's supposed to be roses? Can I, can I tell you that sometimes it's harder being a Christian than a non-believer? Sometimes things are rougher for us. You know why? Because the enemy does not want you to receive the blessing. The enemy does not want you to have what he could have had and what he lost. Verse 10 says, Hannah was distressed of her soul, her mind, will, and emotion, praying, weeping bitterly. You've reached that point, those who are listening to me today. Some of you have reached that point where you feel, you feel distressed. You feel like you want to quit. You feel like you just are, are hopeless and there is no solution to what's going on. It says year after year, verse seven, quickly, year after year, she was provoked and she wept. But the Bible says what Pastor Randy and I, I sometimes, you know, Pastor says, Carmen, you got you to say it right. He says, a, a weeping may endure. may endure for a night, right. but joy comes in the morning. Year after year, year after year, she, year after year, rather. I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. Let me calm down. Year after year, she was provoked and she wept. You may be at your breaking point, wanting to quit and throwing in the towel. In verse 8 and 9, we have a dialogue that's occurring with Hannah and her husband. And she got to a point, she said, I'm not going back anymore. She said, I'm not eating. I'm not doing anything. I'm not sacrificing. I'm just, I'm done. But verse 13 says that, that, that the, the, the last breaking point. Verse 13, she says that as she was weeping, Hannah was speaking in her heart. Her heart knew the intent. Her heart knew her desire. Man, if you read, in, I think in 1 Samuel 16, it says that man sees what? The outside, but God sees the heart. And see, and we see the dialogue. What happened was, and if you look at verse 13 and on, uh, Hannah was having an inward conversation. Have you ever had an inward conversation where no one understands what you're going through but yourself? Not even your husband, not even your wife, not even your children. You're frustrated, you're, you're anxious, you're worried. You're like, you can't even express it. You, you try to worship, you go to church and you raise your hands and it's, it's a challenge for you, it's a difficulty. Hannah was at that point. And the Bible says that as she was praying and weeping, Eli, the, which represents the world, could not understand why she was why she was weeping. And the scripture says that Eli said, why are you drunk? Like, in other words, he was an antagonizer. See, let me tell you, 
You have, and, and I wrote this down. I want to make sure I get this right. You have, you have uh, the, fu the, the future Elkanah, right? Elkanah represents the future telling you, aren't I more than enough? Why I my love for you is more than ten sons. You have Panania, the past, always trying to cause you to check that box off, telling you, telling you that you can't have children, that you are worthless, that you are undeserving, that you are insufficient. Then you have Eli, the present, telling you to check off that box. You got three people. Three representations coming to you at once. And Hannah was in the middle. And Hannah chose in that moment to worship God. Because see, the only person that could answer her petition was God himself. There are some petitions. There are some requests. There are some things in your life that no one can resolve. No one can change. No one can break but God himself. And you have been running. You have been uh, worried. You have been anxious. You've been trying everything else, but you need to come to the feet of Jesus Christ that will bring you joy, peace, and hope in your life. Yes. The Bible says she was at the altar and I'm almost closing. She was at the altar and she was praying and she was saying, God, if you give me this child, if you give me this man child, I promise that I will dedicate it to you. See, we have the habit that once God blesses us, we forget him until the next situation. We forget about what God has done in our life. We only come to God when things are rough. We only come to God when things are challenging, when things are distressful. But she came to him and she said, I promise you that what if you bless me, it will be a perpetual grateful heart and attitude that I will that I will have and I will sustain. She said, I promise you. See, the the, the crazy thing about it that Hannah loved wanted a child so bad that she said that God, if you give it to me, I'll give it back to you. Ain't that crazy? The very thing that you ask God for when he gives it to you, you got to give it back to him. And it says, listen to this, and this is verse 16. And, 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 and you know what? I, I, I might get in trouble for this. And, and it's nothing political. But I was trying to answer, I was trying to um, question God. And I was trying to figure this whole situation out about the rioting and about the, the Black Lives Matter and, and All Lives Matter and the controversy about, uh, among cultures. And he gave me the scripture and he told me this. He says, listen, regard me not as a wicked woman for out of my great complaint and bitter provocation, I have been speaking. Sometimes you will speak out of provocation. You will speak out of bitterness. And the reason why you have actions and the reason why you're going through things because you have been bitter for so long and it's come to a point that you're at a breaking point. Can I tell you that God is about to do a movement in the midst of this breaking. God is about to break down racial barriers. I prophesy that he's about to break down cultural deviation and cultural structures and cultural restraint. Because the movement of God and the spirit of God and the flow of God cannot occur until walls are coming down, until walls have been broken. Listen, there was not freedom and liberation until the wall of China came down, until until the great uh, the German wall came down. There, things will not occur until walls have been separated. And there was a breakthrough that Hannah had to have. She said, it says here in verse 16, out of my bitterness, I have been speaking. I've been dismayed. I've been distress. I could not give a sacrifice because of my distress, but I'm here today, Holy Spirit. I'm here at the altar telling you today that I've had enough, that if you give me the blessing, if you give me my heart's desire, I promise I'll give it back to you. And when she looked at Eli and she told Eli, she said, no, it's not that I'm drunk, Eli. It's not that I'm sack, that I'm, um, um, I'm upset or I, I, I've given myself to drunkenness. No, it's because I have gone, come to my breaking point. I have come to a point where I can't do it any longer. And this is what he told her. He says, give me a second here. And he told her, he says, he says, he's, and let, let, let me look at this quickly, if you don't mind, because I, I want to make sure that I, that I say it right. And I want to make sure that you guys get it. And, and as she was having that dialogue with, with Eli and, and he was talking to her. Oh, here we go. Verse, first Samuel chapter one, verse 16 and 17. 
He said, regard not your handmaid as a wicked, wicked woman, for out of my great complaint and bitter pro provocation, I have been speaking. So what she was saying, she said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I was pouring out my soul before the Lord. The world will not understand what you're going through. They will not understand how you can still praise God and how you can still worship when you have not received what you've been asking God for, for such a long time. When you have not seen your children come to the Lord, when your finances have not had received a breakthrough, when you have not been, and when you have not uh, received what you have desired and believe in God and petitioning for. And she tried to tell him, she said, listen, you don't understand. I come from a sorrowful spirit. But Eli told her that he said, then Eli said, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her woman went her way, did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. I want to tell you today, go and eat. Go and eat. Weep no more. Go and eat. Weep no more. Make preparation for your child is coming hot. Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. Make preparation right now. Make a way. Make room for your child is on his way. Can I tell you, your breakthrough is already here. Yes. And it says that he remembered her. Hallelujah. He remembered her. God remembers you. He knows you by name. There's a song by Tasha Cobb that says he knows my name. He knows your name this morning. Can I tell you? He knows your name. He knows you, Maria. He knows you, Tita. He knows you, Jeanette. He knows you, Janice. He knows you, Amanda and Elena. He knows your name, Pastor Mike. He knows your name, Rebecca and Jose. He knows your name. And the Bible says that she laid with Elkanah and she bore a son and presented him. Lord has given you a portion. He has given you a double portion for your pain. And with that double portion, you will make a preparation for what's coming next. Next. Can I tell you, you're not barren. Right now you're just childless. Doesn't mean that you're not going to bear a son. There's a promise. Can I tell you today? There's a promise that God has for you. There's something that he has for you waiting. And all you have to do is come to the altar. You might have joy, but I, can I tell you there's everlasting joy? You might have money, finances, right. but can I tell you that God has provision? Amen. You might have peace. Everything's going good. But can I tell you that he'll give you peace? That's right. In the midst of the storm, you too. Facebook, loved ones and saints. What a joy to know. He knows my name. He knows your name. Anthony, he knows your name. Angel, he knows your name. John, he knows your name. Greg, Marta, he knows your name. And he's your friend. Will you pray with me today? Heavenly Father, worship you, Lord, today. And we thank you because you are the great I am. Hallelujah. You are the great provider. You are the way maker and the promise keeper. And before anything, Lord, today I ask for my friend, Pastor Mike. Lord, that today you are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha, the healer, Lord. And I declare and decree at 
this moment, at this very moment, that his blood pressure shall decrease. Lord, regulate his glucose. Regulate his heart, Father Lord. And what the enemy has caused him to check, we erase it in the name of Jesus. Cancer, we remove that box in the name of Jesus. Diabetes and blindness, we remove it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Kidney and renal misfunction, we cause it to come alive. We cause every organ, every liver, every lung to align with the word of God. Hallelujah. I prophesy that you are impregnated with the promise. You are impregnated with the provision that God has for you. Hallelujah. If you don't hear anything else, know this. He knows your name. Jackie, he knows your name. Elio, he knows your name. He knows your children's name and your children's children's name. Yes. Oh, what a joy. And Father, we thank you today thank you, that we walk in peace. Those rivals, Amanda, he knows your name, Mama. He knows your name. He knows you by name. That box that you've had to check off, the loss that you've had to check off, the hurt and the pain you've had to check off. Can I tell you, those who are listening to me today, you can erase it. He has already done it. He knows your name. Karina, Emilio, he knows your name. Vanessa, he knows your name. Sherry, he's removed that box, mama. He's removed it. Lord, we thank you today. Nancy, he knows your name. He knows your name. He knows your daughter's name. We thank you, God, in your matchless name. Amen and amen.